Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So, kind of getting into the multi-axis uh, strategies that we offer for your fourth axis. Uh, you've seen that I, I've broken down the, the part just a little bit. Uh, instead of selecting around the entire uh, model, I'm just choosing a section of the model. And from that section, really, there's just um, a couple of things that we need. We need a uh, first and second curve. And then we also need <clears throat> some drive surfaces that we're going to drive the tool path along. And then uh, when you look at your surface normals, you want to make sure your surface normals are pointing out. Now, when it comes to the strategy, what we're using is morph between two curves. Um, we've chosen a ball mill to machine this. And when we get into our parameters, we have our first curve. We select our second curve, our drive surfaces, stock for finish. Um, we have an extend and trim here, so you can have it start and finish off the part. Uh, I'm doing zigzag cutting, maximum step over, and general cut tolerance. So all of, that, all, all of that is pretty straightforward as far as the way that that works. When it comes in the tool axis control, this is... Um, a little more uh, complicated or really should I just say there's a lot more options as far as uh, how the tilt is handled um, you know lead uh, lead cutting direction you know um, tilt angle side of cutting and adjustments side tilt definition you know um, all of these different tilt types uh, are generally focused on specific uh, applications uh, in this case, we're just going to say um, not to be tilted stays normal to surface, you know, and then you get into your gouge checking and you have four different levels of gouge checking that you can use and uh, they uh, layer on top of each other. When you do gouge check, you have your check surfaces or your drive surfaces and then, uh, you know, what you want the tool to do uh, when it encounters a gouge, um, you know, so just more and more variables layered on top of it. You have all your different linking approach, um, uh, you know, what happens first and last, gaps along the cut, links between slices, lead in and lead out settings that you use, um, you get into your... Uh, default lead in and lead out and you have all of these different types of lead in and lead outs and you know it, it, it can be a little overwhelming because you know they're all used in particular situations you get into your roughing I mean you have multi passes if you want to rough it down or step an inch um, you know plunge uh, roughing I mean again it just depends on on the application uh, area roughing, uh, but the, probably the one that would be important here would be the uh, transform and rotate. And what this is going to allow you to do is make copies of that. So we program one and then we, we copy it around. A couple of other utilities back here. But, you know, this is how we generate uh, generate this path. Um, you know, if we unblank the path here, we can see, you know, the direction that the tool's facing. And there's a lot of... Uh, uh, adjustments that you may want to make into that. Let's um, run this through a simulation so we can take a quick look at what's going on. Uh, we'll jump ahead and um, we'll jump ahead in uh, in the process. So we have all of, all of our move lists. We'll just jump to number five, and uh, we'll get into a tool view so we can see what's going on here. So again, we said stays normal to surface, so you can see. You know, as we bring this through, the tool is staying normal uh, to that surface. Um, sometimes you may want to um, you may want to control, you know, which direction it's pointing in, and and uh, your lead or lag angle, and and you have all that control with your uh, tilting. Uh, really, the difference of this cut, I mean. You know, the rotary actually does a pretty good job of it, uh, and you guys may have some additional uh, uh, feedback from me, but you can see that we have our Z, well, our X, Y, Z, and A rotation all at the same time. I mean, for, for this particular part, is not as uh, as clear uh, as it being true four axis. There's just um, there's not a lot of Y movement going on. It's very fractional movement. Um, other examples when you have just like a straight, you'll see the tool run right across it in a Y move. But uh, you can see that all four axis are running, you know, at the same time. Uh, again, once you start getting into rotational moves, uh, you know, your the speed of cutting really slows down. 
you know, because you have all this motion going on, and there's all kinds of post settings for, you know, singularities and angular increments and, uh, you know, rotary degree maximums. Uh, all of that is handled through the posting. But, you know, I wanted to, to jump in and show a little bit of the multi-axis and some of the options that are there. There are seven surface-based strategies that you can use in three, four, or five axis. And uh, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, uh, sometimes it's necessary to have these tools. In this particular example, you know, I don't know if it's necessary. I'm kind of breaking it up into different groups. Uh, you know, we may be doing just fine using the rotary. But I look forward to your guys' feedback. If you if you do watch this video and you've been following along with the thread, um, you know, please comment. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Uh, thank you so much.